English were outlawed. And without God's word, we were in darkness. Back in the 14th century, that was John Wycliffe's concern. Look, you call me a heretic because I have translated the Bible into the common tongue of the people? A century later, Anne Askew was burnt at the stake for defending the same cause. I had rather to read five lines in the Bible in English than to hear five lines in a language I do not understand. And do we remember that those who were found teaching or simply reading the Bible in English were persecuted like these parents from Coventry? You have no English to talk the Lord's Prayer to your children in English and are condemned to die. Burn them with their cherished Bibles. Burnt at the stake in 1519 for teaching their children the truth. And of course, there was William Tyndale of Gloucestershire. If God spare my life, ere many years I will cause a boy that driveth the plow shall know more of the scriptures than thou. Tyndale in believed that everyone was intended to know God personally. And so he gave his all to translate the Bible into English. And by all I mean, in his life, uttering these final words as he was bound to the stake. Oh Lord, open the King of England's eyes! But that was not the end. Another reformer, Hugh Latimer, said as the torch was laid at his feet. He shall the stake! such a candle in England as I trust shall never be put out. And they, and so many others like them, were right. And their prayers were answered. For just three years after Tyndale's death, the Great Bible was approved, making the Word of God available in English for everyone to read. Let them be asked 